Okay. <clears throat> what was the most memorable to me was Tanner. He seemed like he had the biggest opportunity to stop what was happening with the pictures and the assault, and he held his breath and said, I guess it was rather startling and memorable. I also found Skylar to be very brave for them calling the cops. I don't know what would have happened if she didn't, because Chloe didn't seem to have much insight after she had gotten into the car, and the boys would have never said anything. I think one possible thing was denial, and I don't think anyone took responsibility for what happened. It wasn't Amber's fault for hosting a party with underage drinking, but Daphne and Kylie's for not taking the fall. Or it wasn't the boys' fault but Chloe's for dressing the way that she did. And it seemed no one could step up to the plate and apologize for their actions, especially Ty, who was very conservative. And they even denied that Chloe was raped, and the rape wasn't really that. I think stereotypes played a big role, um, but it was very clear that the athletes, the football players of a small, typical football town, were the prime concern, and not the girls. And the athletes always get away with anything, and the girls always at fault. And the girls should always have a buddy with her. And she should have said no, but what about the boys for trying? I also think that <clears throat> social media was a big thing. Um, when they married DeAndre, um, who represents the infinity of the internet and how anything can be found once it is posted, um, social media is the reason people were aware of what happened. The tweets, the posts, and videos were hard evidence. And um, one element was the multitude of characters. They allowed for a better vision of a typical high school. Many groups are projected, the jocks, athletes, the slutty girl, people who want to fit in. Uh, with the many characters came across the many different sides and the opinions of what actually happened. The second element was the early point of attack. It was definitely obvious that something was going to happen later on in the play as the exchange and dialogue between Chloe and Connor was very intriguing. It basically stated that something happened but did not state what specific um, thing was. Then there was a slow build up until the word rape was actually thrown out there. <clears throat> the third element was the non-theater plot, and it seems that the past is always being dwelled upon simply because it's irreversible. The incidents that occurred in Good Kids cannot be changed, the pictures cannot be deleted, the actions can't be taken back, neither can be the spoken words that didn't occur that showed up such as reaching out. We start in the future looking at the past and go through the motions, but are always brought back to that night. I think that it's very common belief we're saying that the girl dresses slutty when she's asking for it, or that athletes are God's gift to earth and do no harm, and I think these are common stereotypes um, that are being reinforced in this play, not to mention the title Good Kids. The play talks about how everyone is a good kid to someone, and I think those are the questions being asked, like what is a good kid, um, what makes them not a good kid. After the incident with Chloe, I would say, um, He's such a good kid, or he was, or he was he such a good kid? I think the play also based a lot that unfortunate things can happen to anyone, whether it be the girl with an egotistical attitude, dressing like a slut, or the cute famous athlete of the town who's about to be indicted later.